<coughs> WZR Radio starts now. now. You can join us in the live chat room at WZRonline.com forward slash chat. Or call into the show at 518-712-3070. I'm coming up my best so I can. Check myself again and I stand. Proving to the man but sheltered. Confidence pretending to the man. Here are your hosts, Matt Boone and Ryan Clark. What's up, you pimps and hoes, and welcome to the Tuesday, August 17th edition of WZR Radio here at WZRonline.com. My WZR Army is already in the live chat room at WZRonline.com slash chat. What's cracking, Larkin? Chris Haller? What's up, what's, what's going on, man? Burr is the word. Burr <laughs> is the word, daddy-o. <laughs> daddy? Oh, and happy birthday, or happy belated birthday, my man. I won't get into singing it quite yet, but after a couple of beers in hour number two, it might happen at the end of the show. No doubt, no <laughs> doubt. I got, uh, speaking of beers, man, I got fucking shit face last night for the birthday. Nice. And, uh, pretty much missed Monday Night Raw. Well, I had it on in the, uh, in the background, but, uh... Did I miss much? That's what I heard. That's what you guys were telling me before we came on the air here. So, I, I caught bits and pieces, but I was more into beer drinking last yeah. night. I took a few shots for you, bro. Not gonna yeah. lie. <laughs> I was like, I was with a couple people. I'm like, this one's for Ryan Clark right here. Well, it's been so fucking busy, man. I mean, we had, uh... Oh, man. You know what... <laughs> We have got, all right, we had, well, let's see, last week we had an incident with uh, Tiffany, uh, Taryn Terrell, and Drew McIntyre, a hotel incident, so we got to, we got to run down that, the Scott Hall situation, I've got uh, some exclusive stuff on that, this double pneumonia story is... <laughs> yeah, it's a crock of shit, my man. It's a crock of shit. I'm telling oh, yeah. you, it's a crock of shit. I've known Scott for a long time. Can't get in contact with him through email, but there are several different indie promoters that... Try, uh, uh, double pneumonia? Nah. Nah. That's yeah, he's had the same problems for years and years and years. I didn't expect anything different. <laughs> right, right. I mean, he is he is in a mandatory rehab right now. I don't know. I don't know what the circumstances behind it are. Whether he he was on probation, mm-hmm. and I don't. I mean, when you're on probation, a lot of times you are random drug tested and. Well, on probation, if you fail a drug test, you are automatically either sentenced to jail, like in Lindsay Lohan's case, or you go to rehab. And I, I don't know. I don't know. He's he's in rehab. Yeah, I'm wondering if it kind of stems back to remember when he wouldn't leave that bar and end up knocking out some windows. Yeah, yeah, that wasn't yeah. too long ago. Yeah. yeah, that wasn't too long ago. Yeah, that's why I was thinking maybe that's one of the things, you know, they find, and that takes a little while to get to, so, you know, I'm thinking maybe yeah. that might be reason. Not sure, yeah. though. Yeah, I, I, I don't know, but I, I believe he's in rehab, and uh, this pneumonia story is, is a big cover-up by his press People. team. Yeah, by his agents and press team and all that other stuff, you know. Well, I mean, I'm definitely hoping for the best for the man. He's always been a great entertainer, a great wrestler, but... You know, I don't know, dude. He's been going through this for a long time, so you not know. even not even the the entertainer or the wrestler part. He is one. I mean, people will have a hard time believing that he is one of the smartest guys. Oh yeah. In the business, I'm talking creative. I'm talking mm-hmm. all around. I mean, that guy has got it, man. And he and he could give back. Oh, so yeah. much to these young guys, man, yet, I mean, demons are demons, you know what I mean? And, and, and they fuck people up, man, and he's just, he's in that, in that bubble, you know? Well, that, and that, well back when uh, they brought him in January 4th, man, everybody was talking about how washed up he is, he can't wrestle. I was, I was marking out, not just for the fact that Scott Hall coming back on TV, but, you know what I'm saying, like, that, like you just said, man, he is a big influence backstage, he's great with oh, the yes. people. I yeah. mean, when, when WCW was at its height, 
he was the one coming up with all those ideas, all the NWO ideas, pretty much, you know, the merchandise and everything like that. He is, he is so smart when it comes to, you know, the, the backstage side of the business, you know what I mean? Stuff that a lot of people don't realize, you know, and he's and so just, smart. It's just so sad, though, like, you know, I mean, that it's, you know, he's been, he's been fighting this, like, this alcohol problem for a long time, and, you know, I mean, it probably is, you know, ruined what he could have been, you know? Right, it's terrible. right. It sucks to see that. You know, speaking of sad and sucking to see that, Lance McNaught, uh, Lance Cade, Cade. Uh, known to you guys, uh, died at the age of 29 last year. Jesus. Friday, last Friday night, I believe it was, and then they found his body on Saturday. But yeah. um, yeah. yeah, that's that's terrible. And you know, the thing is, a lot of people are. I mean, you know, obviously he's not confirmed, but a lot of people are saying it has to do with like you know drugs and overdosing and stuff. But we're gonna uh, we'll run down the story. I think what we're gonna do, man, is we're gonna run down SummerSlam. We gotta talk about that show. God, that sucked. Was that a bad thing? Oh, my God. Hey, you know, honestly, bro, this is my thing with it. If it would have been one of their B pay-per-views, it still right. would have sucked. But this is, you know, their, this is, you know, uh, WrestleMania, SummerSlam, Survivor Series, and Royal Rumble. That's their big four, right. you know? And just for, you know, such the hype that SummerSlam always gets, man, this show fucking sucked. Well, that was way too much. The, uh, there was a lot of promo time. Um... And, and I'm wanting, you know, when you pay $50 for a pay-per-view, all of your storylines, going into the pay-per-view, okay, your go-home Raw or your go-home SmackDown, all your storylines are supposed to be set in stone. And it wasn't the case, especially, especially going into SummerSlam. Oh, well, yeah. Let alone WrestleMania, you know, WrestleMania or SummerSlam, especially those two. Mm -hmm. You've got to, and on the fly... During the pay-per-view, and granted, the uh, the Brian Danielson, Daniel Bryan decision was only made a few days prior to him appearing at SummerSlam. So, yeah. once again, it's WWE's creative team on a week-to-week -week basis. Yeah, that's what I was just about to say. We talk but, about that every week. <laughs> but it made sense. It all came together because you had this stuff with The Miz basically saying, you know, do you want me to join your team? Do you not want me to join the team? And The Miz was basically the focal point and people forget that on NXT season one the Miz Daniel Bryan's pro exactly was mm -hmm. was the coach so so everything everything came together you know what I mean everything everything just came together at the pay-per-view so it worked out well it was just a lot of stuff wasn't set in stone going to well, that pay-per-view you, know? you, you know something that really I think I think really changed the dynamic of it was the fact that if you really think about it, man, this was like the first year that it really didn't have the same feel, you know, with Triple H out, Undertaker being hurt, you know, we only had that little appearance, Cena being buried in the seven-man elimination match, right. HBK retired, you know, pretty much all the veteran performers that we're so used to seeing, and they're, you know, pretty much superstars in our eyes, you know, pretty much are off in the sunset, and, you know, WWE's trying to promote this younger talent, right. so, you know, they didn't really have those veteran stars on the show. Boy, and you know what? That leads us into one more thing I want to talk about later on tonight. As long as we have time, Paul Heyman. Um, there were some comments yesterday about yes. about guys being over the age of forty and and fifty and sixty and, and this and that. And I hope we get into that. I got oh, some things to say about that. But yeah, yeah. I want to I want to talk about that because I, let me let me just say, I, listen. I, I understand that these guys are 40, 50 years old, but the fact is, is these guys are major names, they're major draws in the wrestling yeah. industry, okay, and if you want ratings, okay, I, I know what everybody wants from, from, from an old school TNA fan like myself, you know, back on the Wednesday night pay-per-views, when it was nothing but the X Division, it was nothing but matches, and you had all these young guys in there, but there weren't any major, major stars, you know, major, major guys with star power, mm -hmm. so I can understand what Heyman is saying, basically it sucks to have guys that are 40, 50 years old in there, Mm -hmm. The problem is, is you need, let's say you need that many, as many as TNA has, mm -hmm. but you need some of them. You need, yeah. you need these people, you just can't, I, if you were to put on a show with, with Eric Young, AJ Styles, Frankie Kazarian, and all these guys, okay, your ratings, your ratings, are, yeah, they're gonna go back down, okay? Mm -hmm. and, 
you need you need these these legends, these bigger stars there to put over the younger talent. So mm-hmm. I kind of disagree a little bit with Heyman. Oh, I like, do too. I mean, let me let, if you just think about this real fast. The two two of their best entering workers is thirty nine and forty one RVD and Kurt Angle. Right. You know, and then they got the I mean they got a couple other older wrestlers that don't wrestle much like you know Kevin Nash, uh, Mick Foley, Sting, and even Double J. Right. So yeah, I mean they're they're not really you know what I'm saying they're not really in the spotlights spotlight so much. Uh, they got probably Hulk Hogan who's the biggest name in professional wrestling who's still you know I mean he's not as big as big of a draw as he thinks he is but he still brought in Jeff Hardy and RVD. And even Mr. Anderson. And then, like I said, if you take out Ric Flair and the ECW guys, there goes your biggest storyline. You know what I mean? And those guys are all over 40, so I don't know what the hell he's thinking. Well, it's just a matter of, I, I, I know what Heyman's thinking. Back in the day when he had ECW and he took all these young guys, right? And he made a product out of these young guys. And i tell you what, in times like this, I mean, Jesus, man, Impact, and, and call me a mark, call me what you will, but the last month or so of Impact, I mean, those shows, that show last Thursday night, that uh, that whole fucking show that they did, Yeah. I, I mean, fucking phenomenal. <laughs> I, I couldn't find anything wrong. From top to bottom, I could not find one thing wrong. With and, that show. Well, this is everybody was bitching about like some of the time limits on that, but you know what I'm saying like eight, or they wanted AJ Styles and Kurt Angle to get some more time. But when you think about it, it's a it's a two hour commercial pay per view type event. You know, you're not going to be able, and that's where the limitations come in right well, there. Well, here's here's the problem. The only problem, I guess, there was one flaw that I had, and that was the ending angle because in the impact zone, you were there. You were there yeah. last Monday. In the impact zone, that angle went there. I mean, it went on for 15, 20 minutes. They had, uh, I think, Brother Devon or Brother Ray or somebody was out there with a fork. And, and they did a fork spot and they did all these spots. And then on TV, it was like four minutes long. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude, yeah, dude. It was, yeah, on TV it was only four minutes, but it went on for at least 15 minutes in the impact zone. Right, right. Everybody was bloodied up, you know what I mean? They showed backstage with RVD looking like he got hit by a train. Right, right. I mean... I, yeah, they definitely should have let it, you know, go on. But that's, that's the problem with Impact lately. I mean, you know, since January 4th, really, they cut out all the good stuff at the end, you know? Right, right. So, uh, I mean, they, they, I mean, that's, I guess that's the benefit of taping TV is that you can do edits. But, God damn, I, I mean, there was so much editing done to the main event angle. I didn't have a problem with the show other than that, man. But the main event angle could have gone on longer. But then the problem with that is if you wanted the, the, the main ending angle to go on longer, you would have had to had to edit matches like Beer Money Inc. versus Motor City, which was holy shit, man! I mean, that, was that was legendary. That was out of this world. I mean, I, I, I also. I told you last week, man, like, you know, 10 years from now when people are going back looking at classic videos, beer, that beer money, Motor City Machine Guns, I guarantee you is going to be one of them. Right, right. That, that was that good. I mean, like, even, you know, just being there, bro, it was fucking amazing. Probably. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I, I mean, I've been to a bunch of, you know, events, you know, wrestling events through my whole life, man, and that was, honestly, that was probably the best match I've ever seen. You know, in- the, first the funny thing about it, bro, is everybody says, match of the year, match of the year. If you guys had any idea, every time I take that train down to New York City for Ring of Honor, I mean, every single match on the card, when they like do that. the, it's like that. It's just <laughs> like that, and the crowd is ten times more more vulgar, ten times more, I mean, the Hammerstein Ballroom is just a... It's an amazing, amazing venue for wrestling shows, and it's so loud in there. I mean, that's the only reason I go down there is, is for matches like that. I wouldn't go if, you know what I mean? If oh, yeah, I know what you mean. Else. But, so. that, but, you know, that that's another, going back to Paul Heyman with that, you remember how Paul Heyman was saying, oh, the tag team match should have been the main event over, you know, everything, blah, blah, blah. Right. But the tag team match, that was right behind the World Heavyweight Championship match. You know, you can't put the tag team championship ahead of the World Championship, you know? Right, right. That's, that's something else I don't agree with the guy with. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's whatever with him. Hey, let's do uh, let's do some plugs. Then we're gonna get into SummerSlam from Sunday night. We're gonna quickly run down Raw, and then in hour number two, I want to run down news. I like I said, we gotta talk about Lance Cade, Lance McNaught. Mm-hmm. Um, gotta talk about Taryn Terrell, Tiffany, and Drew McIntyre, and uh, Paul yeah. Burchill. I got an email from Paul Burchill this week. You know what he's doing now? Uh, what? What's that? Full time firefighter. Damn. <laughs> That's what he, he left. Well, he got fired from WWE. Yeah, from WWE. He's, uh, full-time fireman now. Wow. He's, uh, wow. He's the new job. Done with wrestling, period? Uh, apparently. Apparently, wow. he's, uh, he's doing that full-time. Paid job. Paid uh, paid fireman. So, yeah. Wow, nice. Uh, I, I guess. guess so. I don't know. He <laughs> sent me an email um, this past week, so that was cool. 